G'day. Come over to the Narendra Fishery Centre here today in the heart of the River Arena. We've come to have a look at uh, you know trout cod and Murray cod, the difference between those two, uh, silver perch and yellow belly. Um, this is the centre where they uh, breed fish. They do a lot of native research on the fish. Come to see Brett Smith, who's going to help us out. He's a uh, fish care educational officer, and uh, so yeah, we'll go and have a look through the centre and let's see what we can do. Right, well, I've got a golden perch here, and uh, Les is hanging on to a silver perch. Uh, a lot of people can't tell the difference between the two. I mean, it's pretty basic, but um, as you can see, they're, t they're two totally different looking fish. There's a few little features there that they've each got. But, um, you know, Brett, run us through a couple of features between these two sorts of fish. Well, probably the easiest to start with, I think, is uh, just with the silver perch there. You'll just see that it's got that bit of a fork in its tail. Um, probably the easiest difference to see where uh, a yellow belly or a golden perch hasn't got that fork at all, so that's probably the first thing you'd be looking for. And the other thing that stands out is just on the uh, pelvic fins here on the uh, yellow belly. It's just you'll see there's a few bit of tassel there, and uh, and obviously on the silver perch they don't have that. So there are uh, two distinguishing features of these fish um, to tell them apart. And then obviously just coloration with the golden. Uh, silvers are generally with that colour all the time, so a, a bit of a darker colour with the golds depending on what. Uh, river system you catch them out of, they can uh, kind of vary from a from a nearly a white out in the Darling system to uh, if you get in some nice clear water, real golden. So they're pretty easy to tell apart when that happens. So um, yeah, just a, some easy distinguishable features. Just the tassels on the yellow belly on those pelvic fins, and just remember to look at those tails. So you've got the fork there in the silver, and obviously no fork there in the yellow belly. So pretty much we can find these fish right throughout the whole Murray Darling Basin system. So yeah, these what these are the features you got to look for to tell the difference between the two species. Yeah, and just be mindful too with silver perch, it's pretty important because yellows we can obviously take out of our river systems but silver perch is listed as vulnerable, so if you catch a silver in our rivers, they need to be released and put back in the water. And what's the bag limit, Brett, on say a golden perch? Uh, for golden perch it's five per day, uh, minimum size limit is 30 centimetres, so uh, obviously your possession limit is twice that, so it's 10, 10 in your possession at any given time. Uh, with silvers, as I said, they're going to be released back in the water if caught in the rivers, but in some listed dams you can actually take silvers from there. So. Yeah, just a uh, good thing if you're in the dam and you want to know if you can catch a silver perch there and take it, just uh, have a look at a recreational freshwater fishing guide and those dams will be listed. There's a lot of confusion out there too, Murray cod and the trout cod, you know, the trout cod are a protective species um, and the Murray cod, you know, you, you can catch these both fish all throughout the Murray Darling except these trout cod are sort of reaching back out west slowly but, you know, Brett, like, what are some of the features that tell us the, the two, difference between the two fish, you know, like a lot of people mix, get mixed up. Yeah, so generally with uh, a Murray cod and a trout cod, uh, you'll find them if you're fishing in the same types of areas, and especially around areas like Naranda and out in Macquarie River around Wellington and Dubbo and those sorts of places you'll run into both these fish. Obviously uh, the trout cod's a totally protected species, so if it's caught it needs to be immediately released unharmed to the water. So some of the distinguishing features you're probably looking for is uh, a trout, trout cod's generally got that overhanging top, top lip there, um, and, it, and it's got a black line through its eyes, so those are some of the distinguishing features you'd look for there. And uh, as they get older, they're, they're, much, they're not as broad, anywhere near as broad as a Murray Cod may be. Um, so just keep in mind, 60 centimetres is the minimum legal length for a Murray Cod. So as juveniles, they can be certainly hard to tell apart. Um, but as they get older, the distinguishing features showing out a bit more. Uh, that model green feature of the Murray Cod, whereas a trout cod will be a, a generally a greyer colour and won't have that quite as much modelled pattern on the sides. Um, but at 60 centimetres, you definitely should be able to tell the difference between both these fish. You said they're a protected species, Brett, so like, what do you do if you happen to catch a trout cod, what's the first thing you do? Oh, well, listen, if you catch a trout cod and, uh, and you bring it up the side of the boat or on the bank or whatever, the best thing to do is just uh, immediately get a hook out of that fish, don't lift it out of the water, uh, no happy snaps or photos or anything like that, just it's important that we get them straight back into that water and they swim off in the uh, best possible condition. So just down at one of the holding ponds here at the Narendra Fishery Centre. Uh, 
We're just going to talk about the fish care volunteers. Brett, what can you tell us about those guys? Uh, fish care volunteer program is a program funded through the Recreational Fishing Trust. So when uh, people go and buy their licences, all that money goes into trusts to uh, fund a whole range of programs throughout the state um, to improve recreational fishing. Uh, there's 350 fish care volunteers across the state. Uh, basically their role is to volunteer their time to promote sustainable recreational fishing and they do a great job. Hi, my name's John, I'm a fish care volunteer. I joined in 2006. I've been fishing all my life since I was 10 or 12 years old with this guy here unfortunately and um, just like to put educational stuff back into the system so there's fish for the future for our kids and our grandkids. Hi, my name's Lyndon. Um, I've been a fish care volunteer since 2011. Um, I actually joined the program so I could actually spend a lot more time with kids and educating kids and certainly to try and reinvest and make sure there's fish around for the future generation. All right, well, the John Lake Centre, it's five minutes from the Randra. Uh, you know, I'll pass you on to uh, Les Rather here. He's the man in charge here. Like, he can tell you all about the centre, excursions, etc. Yeah, the centre's open four, uh, five days a week, Monday to Fridays, 8.30 to 4. Um, we run tours, five tours a day. Um, and you can ring up and, and, and get a tour at, if just ring 6958 8200 and uh, we'll give you the information. The centre itself is in aid of John Lake, so John Lake was the first biologist here at Narendra. Uh, John came here in 1959 and, uh, and it was then that the centre sort of was established. So the, the, And then this centre here, the John Lake Centre itself, was established in 1984 in aid of John Lake, who kicked off the uh, breeding program for native fish in Australia. Uh, so there's quite a bit to see here. We've got uh, Various ponds, there's 40 odd ponds on the site. Uh, out of those ponds, there's 29 that are uh, broodstock holding ponds, and the other 11 are uh, fry ponds. As well, we've got a native fish hatchery, so you can go and view the hatchery, particularly in the summer months, uh, and through spring when the, when the hatchery's in full production, it's a good time to come, and uh, you'll certainly get a lot to see here at Narendra Fisheries.